In one of my earliest videos, I show how I make the swappable hot end with this special connector, which can disconnect the Bowden tube and the other connections. But would it be possible to design and print our own custom connector? Hi, I'm John for Proper Printing and in this video I'm going to see if I can design a custom connector and print it. The reason why I'm going to do it is because of this swappable hot end that I've designed earlier. There are some issues with it. Yeah, one of the biggest issues is the, uh, the connector itself. It turns out that this special D-sub connector or mixed D-sub connector is a bit hard to get. I managed to get a couple of them. It turns out that they are pretty difficult to get and they are expensive. So I'm going to create, I'm going to try to create my own custom connector if it works. And this is a, a well, money well spent. Another problem that I have encountered with this is the Bowden tube itself. I was printing the tool change with the Z homing uh, switch inside it and I wanted to print the base out of nylon and I started printing on my CR10 and it printed one of the best first layers I've ever printed with nylon. It started right before I went to bed. I thought well this it, it cannot go wrong. It looked perfect and the next morning that perfect first layer was still there together with a lot of filament because the uh, Bowden tube sprung loose. Um, I made sure that the Bowden tube didn't come loose again by applying a lot of uh, glue, super glue, hot melt and uh, tie wraps. That's not an ideal situation because the idea is to make a custom connector. We can embed all kinds of uh, things to it. I'm planning to embed this standard Bowden coupler. I can add thread inside the connector, screw this thing in and then I'm sure that the Bowden will stay at, at its position. And the th third problem that I haven't encountered, but it would be a bit nasty if it, um, if it ever happens. I discovered later that the N3 and the CR10 both work at different voltages. The CR10 is at 12 volt and the N3 is running at 24. It, it would Possibly it will probably be fun to try out, but I don't think it's um, a good idea to add a 12 volt tool To the end of three a nice thing if you if we are going to make our own custom connector That I can make a different version for 24 volt and for uh, 12. This is the first connector that I've printed It's a pretty standard connector But the special thing about this connector is the pitch and I needed this for testing a PCB at my work. No, I haven't designed this, I modified it. I just downloaded the original uh, connector, changed it a bit and printed it out on an Ultimaker 3. And we all know that an upgraded N3 outperforms an Ultimaker 3. I've bought several contacts for uh, the sub connector housing. I'm going to put a link into the description of these contacts so you know which contacts that uh, I'm using. And I think these are pretty standard. Next uh, thing what we are going to do is uh, going to the computer and design ourselves a custom connector. We're at my computer and I'm not going to design a complete connector. Uh, I use 3D Content Central a lot for uh, downloading all kinds of standard parts. House, uh, this up. Wait a minute, this up housing, that's easy. I'm going to start with this mail version. So I hit download and I can open it in a new Fusion 360 document. There it is and it looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. This isn't the first time I've done this. I have uh, made one section and it turns out that um, it didn't fit. I'm going to do it in a different way. Um, what I'm going to do is a and another X here and I want them plane through two edges and select this and this edge so now I have a plane 
in the half of these uh, circles and I'm going to draw something nice on this plane for example a large enough rectangle and do an extrude that direction download this again in Fusion 360 and insert it to my current Fusion 360 document hopefully that works and there it is and I'm wondering Uh, let's pretend this didn't happen this is of course <laughs> the female connector <laughs> okay female version and insert this in the current document or I have the wrong contact or this is the wrong connector I have a very special connector and to be honest, I do not want to uh, to cut this in half. Yes. I've cut this thing in half. And now I'm going to check if this will fit. And more importantly, how it fits. So it's pressed in like this. Okay, the diameter in here is bigger than there. And this is tapered. So this is a color. So that's what I'm going to design. Ah. I have screwed up at first because I just uh, printed out that connector and um, I thought that um, that it would fit and that it, this would be a short video full of successes but I don't think that will be the case but now I know how this connector works so I can go back and uh, design my own nice I'm going to use this connection itself and design my own connector around it. I think it's a uh it's about time to print this thing and to put it to the test. While my printer is printing the second version of this connector, yeah, it would be nice if I have a crimp tool. Crimp tool. Oh shit! It would be awesome if this would work. <laughs> I think the idea is fun, but um, I have to conclude that this isn't going to work. I'll search for a, a cheap alternative because I do not want to spend 400 euros on a crimp tool. I have made myself a male and female connector and, they, and it works. I went for a, a search and it took me um, almost one minute to find this cheap crimp tool. Yeah, I don't know if this works, but it looks promising. What a clothing. I have one segment and um, yeah, I can rearrange these segments the way I want it to. I've made my first connector. These two connections here, these are the pairs for the, um, for the heater. Uh, these two here at the top are the two for the thermistor. These two are for the part-end fan and for the hot-end fan or the other way around. And here at the center is of course the Bowden tube. Print it. Whoop. It looks pretty good. This connector is fun but this is of course not the result we are after. And now it already looks a bit more like a connector. I've designed a male version, so if I'm hiding this, then this is the male version. And if you're taking a look at the other side, I have added thread in here, so I can insert Bowden coupler. These diameters here, I'm going to add M3 washers in there. Because we are 3D printing, we can do a lot more. As you can see in my timeline, I have done quite a bit more. And this is the male connector together with the housing and the 
other part, the cap is placed on top here and it's held down by two M3 screws. Yeah. But we aren't there yet. <laughs> if I drag this thing all the way here. This female connector is now embedded in the, um, well, the holder, in the existing holder I've created months ago. I don't have to put a separate connector onto a holder. The whole co holder is basically the connector. <laughs> I'm going to print everything, put everything together <laughs> and hope for the best. Okay, the prints came out great. I've printed this out of PETG. And an important thing is to put the right connections on this one. The sort of male connections have to go here. Finally, but it's not thanks to that tool. This tool together with my Letterman tool will do it. It took a bit longer than I expected. And I have split these two because these heater connections, they draw a bit more current. Okay, I have to do a redesign. Don't screw it up again. Man. Here they are. Oh man, this is not an ideal situation. No. Oh man, that's so tricky. If I do this twice, then it breaks. And if it breaks when it's all the way in, then I can't get it out anymore. <laughs> Here it goes. Ah. Okay, please don't break. Ah, nice. <laughs> yes, it's in. Okay, that last one. Yes. I have made myself finally a female connector. Hopefully this will fit still. Oh, it's a very tight fit by the way. <laughs> but it fits, <laughs> it fits very good. Okay, last thing. These holes aren't all the way through. Oh man. Would this be strong enough? Okay. Do you know that feeling when you have better tools lying in your shed but you don't have the patience to get all the way to it to get them because you're 
way too excited to get everything together. This is uh, starting to look like a, uh, a finished connector. Still one thing, of course, the Bowden. Make sure it's all the way at the bottom, as far as you probably can. You can just cut it alongside here. Oh man, the amount of work. <laughs> I didn't think it was um, it was going to be this hard to make a connector, but I finally have made a working custom connector. I've printed it and it fits and I think it's awesome. My idea is to upload these segments. This specific connection is used for the D-Sub housing, but there are other housings as well, as I've shown at the beginning with this uh, connector. This is a Molex housing. Yeah, there are many more of these uh, types of contacts and housings, and I think it would be interesting to add more of these segments, uh, which you can rearrange the way you want it to, to make your own custom connector. But maybe it's even possible to make a mixed connector with these sub connections and with these Molex connections combined. There's still much to figure out. I'm going to search for a better crimping tool. Please leave a comment if you have any suggestions. Maybe a good crimping tool or a suggestion for a, a con connection I should try. So that's it for now. If you like this video then uh, please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed already please consider doing so. Thanks and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.